And for more on this, we're very pleased to be joined by Dr. Kenneth Miller. Miller is a distinguished professor in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Rutgers University. Um, and for folks who didn't get to see the headline that came out, Dr. Yu, in addition to another team, uh, including some folks over at Tufts, uh, laid out some projections that should have made people sit up and take notice, especially in New Jersey. People know that sea levels are going to rise, but as you folks laid out, they're going to be a particularly acute um, in the Garden State. Um, and people, if they didn't feel the effects or, or take notice of it in Sandy, we could be looking at new normals in the not too distant future, couldn't we? Yes, we could, Rich. We uh, are looking at a rise in sea level, certainly even by 2050, of about a foot and a half on the New Jersey shoreline. Put that in practical terms for folks because when they hear that, and, and we have a model that we're going to show some folks that you, that you put together, and this is of Ship Bottom, New Jersey, which is uh, Long Beach Island for a frame of reference. We showed what it was in 2008. We showed the photo of what it was in the aftermath of Sandy. And then we lay out what it could look like in 2050 and then 2100. And you guys are even using modest projections. There's variables where these numbers could even be even substantially higher than that. Give an idea what this means, how many people could be displaced, and what a rise of three feet in water, let alone more, would practically mean. Well, the effects of sea level rise are to make storm surges worse. And so if you put sea level up a foot and a half uh, by 2050, the storm surge that would occur with a normal, every run in the mill, say storm that comes every 10 years, the so-called 10-year storm or has a 10-year recurrence interval, would have had the flooding power at Atlantic City that Sandy did. It would be essentially become a 100-year storm equivalent, just from that one and a half feet. And you have almost a compounding effect. What I got from your report, and as much as you can help me and the audience digest this, it's not just that the sea levels are rising and uh, uh, the polar ice sheets are melting here um, and, the and the oceans are getting warmer, but you also have the compounded effect that New Jersey's actually sinking. Isn't that right? And explain if you could also, uh, you know, that seesaw effect that you have with Canada going on simultaneously. Well, global sea levels rising, that is true. Currently, the effects of sea level rise on the New Jersey shore, the global is only half of the component of the sea level rise. It's also the fact that New Jersey is sinking due to two effects. One is regional. Regional goes from New York City down through, uh, the, uh, all the way down through, through Washington, D.C. to, to uh, Norfolk. And that whole region is sinking. Uh, uh, about a quarter of the effect is due to this regional sinking. And that's what you alluded to with this, the seesaw. 20,000 years ago, there was a very thick ice sheet in Canada. That weighed down the earth. When that ice sheet melted over the, uh, by 10,000 years ago, the earth is bouncing up. It is moving up. But if something's going up, like on a seesaw, something's going down. And we are going down. And that's the regional effect. But if you go to Atlantic City or Cape May or Lewis, Delaware, or, or even Sandy Hook, those regions are sinking even faster. And those regions are sinking because of the compaction of the sand. We all go to the beach, and we know as we step on the beach, the sand moves down a bit. The sand will move down due to natural compaction, but it'll move down even faster if you pump groundwater out of the sands. And we are pumping groundwater out of the sands from, from Sandy Hook all the way down through Cape May, New Jersey. And that has ma made sea level rise even faster along the coastline. And before we even get into uh, what, uh, you know, city planners and, and uh, elected officials uh, have to figure out here, um, this isn't just some hypothetical. You take a look, and I know you guys did, at the last century, we were already seeing unprecedented levels of sea level um, rising, aren't we? That is true. And with one and a half feet, that affects basically what we have to do in terms of planning for, let's say, low impact things, low impact being your home. I know that's not low impact to most people, but uh, let me just put it this way. If you get a mortgage, my get son, son gets a mortgage in a few years, his mortgage in the Jersey Shore is going to go to 2050, and he will see these flooding levels. Uh, 
The question is, is what we go for by 2100. Our estimates are less precise because we're extending out further, but our best estimate is three and a half feet. Now, in the worst case scenario, though, it may be as high as 10 feet. We don't regard that as likely at all. It's unlikely, but if you're planning for a very high uh, profile, very expensive, let's say a, uh, a uh, dike across New York Harbor to protect a tide gauges to protect or tide gates to protect New York Harbor, and that will cost five billion dollars to build. Uh, how high do you build it? Well, you have to build it for the absolute worst case scenario, which is about ten feet. So, but coming back to your home, I have a house at the Jersey Shore, and FEMA has incre increased my flood level from seven to nine feet. But that does not include the effects going forward as sea level rise. New Jersey has included an additional foot in its uh, guide, guidance from the Department of Environmental Protection to towns. So in my, my town, my flood level went from 7 to 10 feet. But if you want to take sea level into account for the length of my, my son's mortgage, it should really be another foot. It should be up uh, for a total uh, of basically 4 additional feet or 11 feet. And that's really what we should be building to. And that's really the lesson. This is not an, an imminent disaster for the New Jersey shore, but it's something we have to plan for. And at least through the mid part of this century, we can plan properly, I believe, with these numbers that we are able to provide. To that end, um, people have options and, and planners, as you said, probably should project to build even higher. But we see certain places already, even before Sandy, like Sayreville, where, like clockwork, that city was going to be underwater. And those poor people, no one was going to buy their homes here. And finally, uh, we're having some forced buyouts. Project that further. When you look at the map and where New Jersey goes in the next 35 to 50 years, will there be more places like Sayreville where it just doesn't make sense to build because they're going to be underwater so often, especially where I also saw in your report, while we see Sandy, the likelihood of storms of intensity of Sandy only go up because of the volatility of all the things we already talked about, do a lot of seaside communities almost become uninhabitable in the not too distant future? Rich, absolutely. We will see more communities like Sayreville. But just let's put Sayreville in perspective. This is a cost benefit decision. We could have built a dike to protect Sayreville. The Dutch have lived beneath sea level for 500 years. It becomes how much do we want to spend to protect a community like Sayreville. The decision was made that buyouts were more cost effective considering the, the value of the real estate. But if we go to New York City, if we go to Queens, we basically have to adapt. We, don't, we can't abandon much of those areas. We must protect. Uh, Hoboken must be protected. There are areas along the Jersey Shore where it will make sense to abandon. There are areas throughout the eastern part of the United States that should be abandoned. I, and I don't want to pick on North Carolina, but Highway 12 is costing a tremendous amount on the Outer Banks to maintain. That highway will be untenable in the future, and the decision will have to be made to, to either really bulwark it like the Dutch do or abandon it. So the decision really is one for planners and policymakers to consider the value of the real estate and what it will cost to protect.